grace to all of you, grace and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, when Jesus told us to baptize, he told us to baptize everyone. He didn't leave out people of any ethnic group. He didn't leave out either gender. He didn't leave out people of a certain age. He said, baptize everyone. And there's no Bible passage that excludes us from doing that. That's because baptism turns us from being spiritually dead to spiritually alive. And everyone is born spiritually dead, so everyone needs to be made spiritually alive. And the word and promise of baptism is that it raises us from that spiritual death. And when God puts his name on us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, that's enough powerful word to make us alive. But when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, the Eucharist, those are all names for the same thing. When Jesus instituted that, he did not do that for everyone. The first Lord's Supper celebrated with his disciples. And he said, do this, and whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. But then the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthian Christians and said, Instead, let a person examine himself, and after doing so, let him eat of the bread and drink from the cup. Whoever eats of the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the Lord's body and blood. If anyone eats and drinks in an unworthy way because he does not recognize the Lord's body, he eats and drinks judgment on himself. And so the Christian church does not offer the Lord's Supper to everyone. Instead, the Christian church, following what Jesus said to the Apostle Paul, offers the Lord's Supper to someone who can examine himself. At what age can you examine yourself? At what age can you realize that you need the Lord's forgiveness because you have done something wrong? The Roman Catholic Church in the United States has set a younger age than the Lutheran Church. Roman Catholic children typically take First Communion, what, maybe age eight or nine? Social scientists, people who study education and brain development would tell you, the adult decision-making logic awareness does not kick in until late age 15, early age 16 in the average child. Most Lutherans have chosen to offer the Lord's Supper to students near the end of their eighth grade year. That was a very practical decision 100 years ago. For many people, that was the last year of education. So that was the last time you had the opportunity to teach what the Lord's Supper was about. It doesn't matter the particular or precise age. That's not something that's set in Scripture. But we don't offer the Lord's Supper to someone until they are prepared to receive it. And then at that moment, as you read in the beginning of the bulletin and as the sermon series has been, we often say, are you willing to confess that you need the Lord's Supper, that you are a sinner, that you need Jesus all the way till the point of death? Well, you and I need the Lord's Supper all the way until the point of death because we will be sinners until that time. And when we recognize that we need that personal assurance from Jesus, then we are prepared to receive the Lord's Supper, prepared to take that true body and blood. The man in the Gospel reading for today knew that he needed Jesus because his daughter was very sick on her deathbed, it turns out. That man, Jairus, 
came to Jesus and said, Jesus, I need you. He needed that Jesus to heal his daughter. He said to uh, Jesus, here's what I want you to do. Come place your hands on her so that she may be healed and live. Jairus knew that he could not do that himself. But he was confident that Jesus could. So he realized his need for Jesus. And here's what Jesus did when Jairus approached him with that need. Jesus went with him. I want you to understand that Jesus is everywhere. He's omnipresent. But when you realize your need for Jesus, and you approach him in the Lord's Supper, Jesus is with you in a very special way. Just as he was with Jairus in a very special way, he went with him. So in the Lord's Supper, Jesus is really there. It's his real presence, his real body, and his real blood. I don't understand how. But I don't even understand omnipresence. How can I understand this special promise of a presence? I do have Jesus' word, though, that he will be with you in a special way upon reception of the Lord's Supper. And I take him at his word. It helps me to be more confident in life. It helps me to be assured of the forgiveness that Jesus gave me already at my baptism. This is how I prepare for death. During life, I receive Jesus' special presence in the Lord's Supper. I want you to notice what the people around Jairus thought of Jesus going with him. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue ruler's house arrived and said, Your daughter's dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? They were skeptical that Jesus' special presence could do anything. Jesus said, don't be afraid, only believe. Then when Jesus approached the house, he saw a commotion with people weeping and wailing loudly. He told them, don't think of this girl now as being permanently annihilated and gone. Think of death like sleep. And they just laughed at him. They were skeptical that Jesus could do anything about that. You're going to encounter people who are skeptical that Jesus can help you. You're going to encounter people who are skeptical that Jesus' body and blood really are there in the Lord's Supper. There are even Christians who are skeptical of that. You may encounter that skepticism in your own heart. When Jesus hasn't answered a prayer exactly as you wanted, or he's let something bad happen in your life, you may wonder, why does Jesus let this happen? Are his promises real? Is he really with me in a special way? When you encounter skepticism or ridicule for your faith, when your own heart has doubts, listen to Jesus' word. Don't be afraid. Only believe. And then remember what he did in this account of Jairus' daughter. He did not do precisely what Jairus asked him to do. Jairus said, go lay on your hands and help her heal. She was already dead. Instead, Jesus took her by the hand and said, Talitha kum, little girl, I say to you, arise. She was dead, and she rose from the dead. Because Jesus has power even over death. He would go on to die himself and rise from the dead. And he would go on to answer many prayers of people, many requests who realize, from people who realize that they needed Jesus. He may not answer those prayers the way that you expect. It may be different than what you ask. But because he has power even over death, because he wants exactly the right thing for you, because he has power to give you exactly what you need, you can trust that he will always 
do the right thing. You can trust that no matter what your situation in life, Jesus is with you in a special way. You can trust that in the Lord's Supper, you receive not only his body and blood, but forgiveness of sins, life and salvation. You are prepared to receive when you know you need that reassurance from the Lord. He's always there for you, knows what is correct. Did you know that I was supposed to preach here two weeks ago? Yeah, I didn't make it. Hospitalized with kidney stones. They have not all passed yet. I'm under medication. I hope that my sermon has made sense so far. I know that I'm supposed to take these meds, and I do, and they help. Throughout church, Christian church history, the Lord's Supper has been called medicine. Medicine of immortality. It helps. It helps along the way. It helps take away pain. It helps strengthen faith the way my medicine, which is so close to me, right back in the room here in case an attack breaks up. I know it's very close. It helps me just to know that it's there. And it helps me get through the kidney stone pain attacks that still come. The Lord's Supper, called the medicine of immortality, helps you get through life. It actually gives you spiritual strength, the way medicine is supposed to give you physical strength. These meds, so far the side effects haven't been too bad. You know how medicine often has side effects. All the side effects of the Lord's Supper are good. Even the things you don't expect, confidence in areas where you used to doubt, strength to do the right thing even when it's hard, a certain reassurance that I really am forgiven even when I still keep feeling guilty. Those are all beautiful side effects of the Lord's Supper that we take on the way to heaven. It's called the medicine of immortality because we take it on the way to eternal life. This Lord's Supper strengthens the way that we get to eternal life, which is faith in Jesus our Savior. And so I invite you to remember this morning that you are prepared to receive the Lord's Supper when you know your need for Jesus. And I invite you to trust him confidently that in the Lord's Supper, in him, you have all you need. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.